All right, so the planet Mercury, as in the, the closest one to the sun in our solar system, is actually very interesting in some of the stuff that it has to offer, despite it being so close and hard to observe. But a lot of the stuff that we have found over recent years, as well as hypothesis, seem to indicate that there's a lot about Mercury we really were even wrong about as well. And so I give you 10 things that we probably did know about Mercury as time goes on. Okay, so number one that you didn't know about Mercury is it's actually getting smaller. It might actually have something to do with the sun and how it basically is, like, I guess you could say sort of melting the planet. And maybe at the same time it's pressure if it has anything to do with it. I mean, I'm not 100% sure on it because, you know, like anything else in space, there's so many different things you got to read about. And uh, some of the stuff that comes up is kind of outdated. But I wouldn't be surprised if over time, let's just say that Mercury might actually end up being smaller than Pluto at some point. As a matter of fact, it's possible that at some point, maybe it gets so small that the planet just eventually crumbles and breaks in half. If that's somehow possible, if it's not able. Because, I mean, at some point, the planet itself has been able to reduce its atmosphere and whatnot, but if its surface can't hold, eventually the pressure points would just either be engulfed by the sun or just break into a bunch of pieces as far as, um, but it's probably more likely that the sun would probably engulf it by that time. So there's uh, reason to believe that at least. So basically another thing that's really interesting is Mercury is actually a tide locked in a two, three to two ratio has something to do with how many times it rotates on its axis and how many times it orbits around the sun. But it's uh, actually very interesting because the sun is the reason why this, basically the reason what tide locking means is that it, it never changes. It, our moon is the same way when it collided with uh, like the earth, for example, and then it started pushed out and it's like getting further away like every single year, it's like an inch or something. But basically what happens is anything that's tide locked means like you'd only, you only see that one side of it. We never seen like the other side of Mercury unless we send like a probe there. But then of course now you got like the lighting issue, you know, cause the dark side of the, the planets is so dark that even up close, it doesn't even look like you can see it, you know? It'd be like standing on the moon, for example, and all of a sudden it gets so dark, you couldn't even see like what's in front of you, you know, something like that. So it's like the same thing with Mercury. Mercury is like really close to the sun, but even the dark side of the moon is, or the dark side of uh, Mercury um, is kind of indistinguishable. And it just goes to show you, it would look like an eclipse, you know, standing where it's at and how cold it would get to. So Mercury actually has what is known as the smallest tilt of um by degrees it's like one in 30 it's like one divided by 30 um of like all the other planets in the solar system that we know of uh, a lot has to do again a lot has to do with tide locking and maybe the stuff that hits it maybe the pressure points too that cause it to uh keep shrinking as well because like when you have a really small object in space it doesn't just affect its mass and luminosity and like everything that's around it but basically a planet that gets smaller it can also affect its acceleration, its uh, overall speed of uh, maybe how fast it's moving in space too. But th this isn't always true though, you know, cause you gotta judge everything differently. But this, in, as far as Mercury goes, it seems like it's a planet. I, I would say that it's still not the slowest orbiting planet. Cause I mean, there was something that hit Venus many years ago that I remember reading about where it, it, it stopped rotating like it should. And it started like, it was like the only planet that orbits like counterclockwise. Like, I don't really know if that's 100%, but I, I, but something to do with like something hit it so many times and hit it hard enough that it caused it to change its, its, um, its recycling, its, its rotation cycle. And coincidentally, you know, Mercury actually looks like our moon. Because one of the very things that they share is that they haven't been, like as far as the geology, the study of its surface, the, the rock formation of it, uh, basically it looks very cratered and it hasn't had a sustainable atmosphere in over like roughly billions of years. So you're basically talking since its very beginning it lost it, but this is just the shell of the surface that has existed, the core of its, you know, whatever's left of it anyways. And um, it just returns to the universe within the, uh, the solar system that it returned to. So it, it, what Mercury might have looked like many, 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 many years ago, it's, it probably would have looked a lot different than it does now. But it, it's kind of hard to say, too, because with a planet that 
you know, first of all, it's the closest to the sun, so it's possible maybe the sun at one point wasn't as big as it is now, but at the same time, though, even, like, going back billions of years, I mean, our solar system might have had even more stars in it, but before they got ejected by Jupiter and other other stuff. But it's um, interesting to think, though, that a planet like Mercury could have probably had a lot more unsolved mysteries. Maybe it even has bacteria living on its surface because of all the meteorites that keep hitting it. And um, and that's actually, and, and it still gets up to like 700 degrees Kelvin. Still not as hot as Venus though, with its compressed atmosphere and its, its density. So they plan on sending another probe to uh, Mercury and it should get there by the end of, or sometime during 2025, so in about four years, um, or almost, um, or let's say three years, if we want to say it's at the beginning of 2025. I don't know what month and day, but anyways, but it's supposed to take more pictures of it, so we have something to go based on it, so that we have something to compare it to for the future references, because that way we know, like, kind of, like, why it's shrinking and what it kind of looks like now aside from just looking at a telescope because the problem with mercury if this isn't already obvious to people it's so close to the sun and it's kind of interesting because even with the telescope it's really hard to see venus sometimes um but at the same time though you have a better chance of seeing venus though than staring at the sun but like, you know, seeing Mercury with a telescope, I don't think is physically possible due to its orbit and due to like, you know, where you can see the sun. It's just the way the orbital patterns work. So basically the only way you'll be able to see Mercury ever is like with a special satellite that they send flying around its orbit. And there's still enough of a distance that, you know, the, the satellites can orbit Mercury and they don't get engulfed by the sun, which is actually really cool. But um, basically, you're talking about a planet that is so close to the sun that it's still within its proximity of like the length of the, uh, the sun and therefore like, you know, because it, it's like the, the, the further out you go, the more you have to zoom in. But the, the more you, but because the sun is so big and it literally looks like it's the same distance as the, the moon, for example, because it looks like the same celestial object in the sky, you know, but it's not though. It's really, the sun's a lot bigger and I would say that because the sun's so big that that's the problem, you know, it's not just the illumination and the lighting. Because keep in mind, like the further you get to the sun, obviously the hotter it gets, but, but it creates such a, such a huge wide luminous ratio that you can't see mercury with a telescope because you have to look in that direction to see it so because mercury's orbit's really close to the sun and it's really small then not just the planet but the orbit of mercury um because the closer the objects are the smaller their orbits are you basically have like in some ways the sun is bigger than the orbit of of um somehow it's bigger it's not it's not like bigger like its entire orbit but obviously because it would engulf it but i mean but it's bigger in the sense that its luminosity covers like a wider range than it was you know from its outer shell to where it's at to the point where you can't see within that range you would just get blinded by your telescope and you wouldn't want to damage your eyesight doing that so basically they have to take different precautions when dealing with close planets like that so that's kind of really the best way i can explain like why and probably the reason why they want to send like a probe out there to study the planet because then it's like up close and then they can take like 4k pictures and or even better than that you know maybe 8k at this point but it, it very interesting uh you know how a planet can look so much different than what we're what we're describe it as and then you, we find out you know maybe there's even more questions we have that we never even thought of before because we're now learning newer things about it just because there have been things that we haven't really seen of the planet that nobody's really talked about yet okay it's now official uh, pluto is actually bigger than mercury and, it had, and again it had a lot to do with the the d uh, geology of, of the uh, the atmosphere just basically destroying itself um, whether it's just stuff that can't maintain it the density is no longer there and the basically it's just shrinking basically so it being Pluto's a nice planet because of how far away it is you know and it's not really in danger anytime soon you know 
but Mercury is basically going to be gone way before Pluto ever does because the sun is going to either engulf Mercury or it's going to destroy it based on its pressure point. So, and, and there's other thing, there's other reasons too, like things keep colliding with it and, but like they want to know more why that is. So before Mercury completely disappears, we're going to archive some more pictures of it and hopefully learn something new about it. You know, that'd actually be pretty cool. But it'll just return back to the the atmosphere that it came from, the universe it calls its home. So again, once again, energy can't be destroyed. It can only be multiplied, chemical and physical changes alike. So that'll be uh, interesting to see how one rock is, uh, because it's weird because, you know, you can get rid of something and then all of a sudden it arises out of nothing, you know. It's amazing to think like how celestial objects can form the way they do, given the force of acceleration and many other things that hold it together, like gravity and com and, and basically like recycling basically um, every element that keeps uh, compatting itself one way or another. So basically, due to pressure points, is why you know, we're not going to be seeing much of Mercury anymore. And the core of Mercury actually is bigger than its atmosphere, its crust, and its surface all together. So that's actually kind of interesting. So basically, the way it goes is you would have your atmosphere of a, of a planet, then your, your surface then your crust and then the core if i got that right um but basically the it just basically starts out real small and then goes down real thick and all that but it's basically a rock planet obviously um but due to you know having no atmosphere and it, if there was ever anything there before it's basically whatever's in its its core and all that so if there's anything that needs to be mined from that planet we should do it before the sun gets it and then turns it into its uh sends the sends it back into the uh the the universe because that's uh going to be interesting but um another thing that's really interesting about mercury was the um not just the geology but the lost history between it you know it could have been a planet that maybe had life on it at one point i mean maybe it uh maybe bacteria that obviously can survive the sun's rays and obviously can survive, um, you know, maybe living on a dark side of it, because, you know, there are cold planets out there. But um, they all survive in different atmospheric pressures, and and it, it really is interesting to think, like, you know, how many things we don't see that are all recyclable one way or another, and it just really gets, to, gets you really thinking, like, Something like Mercury could have very well have been a planet that maybe had stuff that you couldn't find anywhere else on, like so, like another another planet like Venus, Mercury, Mars, or Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, and whatever else is out there. Just just to name some planets, you know, that's obviously not all of them, but there's something out. There's got to be more out there than what meets the eye, because there always is. So apparently, uh, from what we understand, Mercury actually has the most craters of um, it being hit by just about all the asteroids that it can come in contact with. Um, it, might also, it also might have a lot to do with the fact that maybe Mercury is a lot older than we think it is. I mean, it's possible, you know, I mean, obviously all stars are, you know, we, we label them at least 4.7, 4.8 billion years, but that we know of but most of them like like as far as the planets go at least um we know for a fact that they in some cases a lot of them probably are older because there's just more evidence to believe that they all have like significant unique details that other planets don't you know because every planet's obviously different uh, whether because the elements you find or just the geology like you know you have like gas giants like, like Jupiter, for example, you know, uh, Jupiter, Saturn, um, Uranus, Neptune, and then, of course, you know, planets like, you know, Mercury, Venus, Mars, and Earth, and uh, Mars, yeah, Mars, um, obviously the inner planets, but um, they're all, you know, rock planets, you know, they don't have, like, you know, they're not super illicit ice giants, and they're not, you know, they're not gas giants either, so, 
you know, you have different planets, they all have different characteristics about them, and they all have a different aging cycle, it seems. But of course, you know, the rule in space has always been as long as the planet can maintain like some kind of uh, surface and core, then you can still call it a planet. You know, it will change its details varying everything else, but as long as the planet can still orbit like safely around another planet, it, it, or around another star, it basically has its, you know, it's still within orbit. Otherwise, it would be what is known as a rogue planet where it goes flying out of its orbit. And there's a lot of those flying around out there that probably got caught in another solar system or, and eventually found its way back into um, the universe, which is really interesting. So basically, if I had to say anything, I would definitely say that the galaxy is full of mysteries we still haven't solved yet as far as like that and a lot of it has to do and a lot of it what's really cool about mercury is not just its size but it's it's also worth noting that the first asteroid field that surrounds earth and mars you know mercury either had to have had a lot of bombardments back in the day or it also must have just got had some bad luck with um its placement, either that or maybe it was originally further out and then it found its way like closer to the sun. It's possible. But at the same time though, it really does make me wonder how many other planets we don't see, how many other galaxies we don't see, how many other universes, dimensions, and even the things that we don't know of like right now. But like could explain, like maybe that explains why like some planets like Mars and Venus and Mercury, they all have the settlements that they do, but what, you know, like as far as bacteria goes, maybe Mercury has so much different bacteria that might have hit it traveling from like other planets and solar systems, it might actually explain where like some of this this bacteria might have came from like if we are I mean as long as the sun didn't vaporize it because um, you know Mercury is so close to the sun. You're talking like 800 degrees Fahrenheit. Venus is just roughly a little bit hotter than that. So I think it's like 864 degrees. But you could have bacteria that could easily survive it due to its uh, temperatures. And you know, maybe they being what is known as extreme acidophilies can survive like the most dense in, in populated area. So Mercury very well due to all the bombardment it got could have a lot of you know, elements and bacteria on it that we don't even see, that we don't even know of, that could have ended up on this planet, let's just say. Uh, it's possible that maybe Mercury might have been part of the asteroid belt at some point. Um, maybe it just went flying out of it. I mean, you know, it, it's not as crazy as it sounds because we, from what we speculate, there was a planet known as Thera. And if Thera was like a, a planet, it was originally in the asteroid belt. So how was, it, how was that in the asteroid belt? It's kind of interesting to think about um again maybe you go back years ago you know maybe the solar system looked a lot different you know and, and that's even confusing to think about uh but anyways it was like you know we had this planet that went flying out of its orbit in the um the asteroid belt and it ended up colliding with our planet that we know of and the remnants that were found inside the earth's core is actually also the moon you know so how does that happen you know and apparently it built itself out from the inside and it worked its way out. And well, now we have, you know, the moon was the remains of another planet, but over time, eventually it just formed due to like uh, spiral orbits and all that. So that's why like some moons and all that are like a sphere golf ball, it looks like. And, and what's really interesting is like something like the moon, you know, it's, uh, you know, if it's the remains of another planet, it does make me wonder what's it, what it, what it looked like. You know, did it have its own atmosphere, its own surface, its own, like, I mean, obviously it's got a surface, but it makes me think, like, maybe it really had life on it at one point, you know, even though maybe not necessarily, you know, because it's, it could have just been like Venus, where, or not Venus, like, like, like uh, Mercury, where it was just bombarded over the years and even since it's very life cycle it had no atmosphere or if it even had one at all or what was left of it anyways so it's interesting to think how that kind of mentality builds upon an atmosphere that could be much different than it is now so something to think about 
Mercury's uh, long life cycle can prove wonders that we don't even know. Maybe Mercury is also one of the most mysterious planets, but yet it's got like the shortest life cycle because it's expected to get engulfed by the sun. So whatever we can find will be very uh, precious indeed. All right, and now this one's kind of something that's still up for debate because even I can't find that much information like explaining like how many different ways I can come up with these scenarios. But basically, so kind of like how Earth was, um, you know, because like the first four planets, you know, you have the, the asteroid belt between Mars and Venus before you get into the other ones that are between like, you know, Uranus and Neptune, uh, the asteroid belts rather. So the first asteroid belt that's between Mars and Jupiter, the inner planets and the outer planets rather. There's been speculation and the more I dig into it, I, I mean, if you look into the story of Thea and there's evidence to believe this, that the, there was an object, Thea, that was a planet, came flying right from the asteroid belt, collided with Earth, and then mostly probably thanks to Jupiter because it's got like a reverse uh, gravity, and it pushes, it, it, it basically forces planets out of its orbit, and it's gal and, and, and objects right out of the, uh, the asteroid belt. Because the way the asteroid belt is, you know, you got like all these rocks that are like orbiting in a certain way, but it, they collide with each other and they go flying out of their orbit, or some like bit of gravity pushes them in a different order, and then they go flying like towards like Earth, Mars, the moon, Venus, Mercury, the sun, you know. But what's really interesting, though, is and, and how rocks are technically formed in space. I mean, I got to really kind of like do some more research into it. But off the top of my head, yeah, rocks can be formed and you'd be surprised in the universe. But, you know, basically, so what ends up happening is planets getting thrown out of their orbits because of like, you know, reverse gravity by like something like, like, say, again, Jupiter. But you also have the fact that, you know, some of this stuff that came from the original asteroid belt could have collided with uh, other planets in the inner planet. So like a lot of the stuff that we see, you know, in our inner planets, again, focus on the first four planets again, and whatever might have been there, even more if there were more planets, would have been because of the asteroid belt. You know, not just like water hitting Earth because that's where the minerals might have came from or, or did. And then you have like the moon came from like another planet that existed. And, and again, the asteroid belt could have looked a lot different like billions of years ago. You know, things could have been different. There could have been more planets too. Let's, let's just be honest. But like basically what ended up happening was... So you have like all these planets that could have existed and before they went became rogue planets. So wherever they're at now in the universe... But basically, uh, you know, like there's objects that went flying out of the asteroid belt, collided with Earth, and then like one of them could have been like our moon, for example, again, the remains of another planet. But where it gets even stranger is like you have, they call it planet Thera, where, you know, it basically crashed into the Earth, destroyed itself, and then a little piece of it went flying out in the space, and it also, you know, it, it started to reform itself due to the gravity around the Earth while the Earth was orbiting around the sun, you know, so due to spiral gravitational forces, it was able to reform itself with the remains of it. And there's been evidence to believe that the stuff that's found in the Earth's core is actually the same stuff that's found on the moon. So basically what ends up happening is because all the other planets would eventually be, you know, be hitting with asteroid belts, that, you know, the stuff from the asteroid belt would find their way into the planets. You know, it's possible that, like, just, just about every object that we've seen so far has had something to do with the asteroid belt, you know. So, like, the moon, um, the, the planet, the, like, maybe hypothetical planets that might have existed, but they could have been something else over time. Maybe Mercury could have came from, you know, something collided with it. Maybe it was a different planet at one point. Uh, bigger. Um, it had a you know, something could have happened to it that it broke off the way it did, or maybe it could have been a third piece from Thera or something like that. So basically something like kind of similar could have happened to Mercury where something just collided with it and it ended up the way it did. Or maybe one even more confusing and puzzling, but it's just hypothetical though, is maybe it, Mercury could have been part of planet Thera when it crashed into Earth, but then maybe a piece of it went flying off and then just eventually became its own planet. I mean, basically, just think of it like this, you know, maybe we still argue what objects they are and where they came from, from the asteroid belt, but basically it could have just been an asteroid belt that it could have been an object that collided with another planet and it came from the asteroid belt originally. Maybe that's something to think about, you know, but what it means, where it could have been, and it wasn't 
It could have been another planet that Mercury came from. Could it have collided with any of the other planets like Venus, Earth? There's definitely some theories that go around it, but none of which anybody can say right now, like as far as, you know, it's lost history. And if it wasn't for the fact that Mercury exists, I mean, we probably wouldn't even know even it even was there to begin with, you know, if someone didn't discover it. So it's like, hey, it could it could have just been a rock that just moved different locations from one part of it to another. Because, you know, when you have impacts all the time, I mean, another object could have collided. Because what's really interesting, they have like what is known as like the bounce effect. You know, a planet could you know collide with another planet it turns into rubble and all that but at the same time all those rocks eventually go flying into the atmosphere again and past you know break the or or orbit of the planet and if they get stuck in an orbit you know it basically creates you know more rocks and and because more rocks are in space then you basically would have more asteroids and all that that eventually form their own planets so maybe just to make a long story short maybe mercury like they say was part of something much bigger it broke off somewhere else and maybe it wasn't thera but it could have been something similar and it just eventually formed its own planet you know right right by the sun where's the other half at and where that could have been you know that's up to debate but it's either one way or another things in the universe just you know are recyclable one way or another so you know that just keeps adding on to the thrills and mysteries that we find that you know anybody who studies planets and anybody who studies the universe eventually you know you learn something new every day you know one place leads to another and hey you know who knows maybe we might find life on another planet if we haven't already you know personally i believe aliens exist but i wouldn't be surprised bacteria does exist on you know these planets but because they get so close to the sun they get vaporized so you know who knows right like how much we don't know in comparison there's definitely a lot more out there than what meets the eye so if you're not already subscribed please subscribe if you have any requests let me know i'll do some research into it and if you just find this stuff interesting please check it out you know again if you want you can support me on patreon send me some money or whatever you know i'll keep making content in exchange but at the same time though i hope to turn this into a full-time job one day so we'll see how we can do with this but anyways, uh, this is actually very interesting stuff. I think it's just really amazing all the things we don't know about. But we can continue to just see what's out there, you know, being able to express ourselves. And what is life really aside from progress? And if something really does exist, you know, we really should find it. You know, just think about all the things we don't know and try to pursue it somehow.